Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the TED Talk Show with me, Kazim. Today, I'm thrilled to have a special guest on the show, Sophie Okonkwa, a senior talent acquisition specialist at Microsoft. Sophie is going to be enlightening us about the different aspects of the recruitment process at Microsoft. She would also be sharing tips that can assist you in securing your dream job. So let's jump right in and learn from Sophie's expertise. All right, Sophie, let's start with introductions now. Please tell my viewers who you are and what you do. Hi, everyone. Hi, Kazim. Thank you so much for having me here at the Tech Talk. I don't take this for granted. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Sophie Okonkwo. I'm a, I'm a senior talent acquisition specialist at Microsoft. So I hire software engineers and technical talents across Europe, across the Middle East, and Africa. Um, of course, when I'm not doing any of that, my spare time, I like to do a lot of community building initiatives. I do have a community that is called the TRE, so Technical Recruiters Africa. And it's a community of over 300 recruiters across Africa, where we just upskill one another, we learn, we grow together, we coach, we mentor one another, etc. So this is Sophie in a nutshell, and I'm just so happy to be here. Kazim, I'm sure you can tell by my smiles. <laughs> sure, Sophie, I can tell that. Okay, I'm just going to let us dive straight in. What are the best ways that Microsoft recruiters source candidates? And what's the most effective way that candidates can reach out to recruiters? All right. So this is a two-in-one question, actually, two-fold question. So you're asking me how we source candidates as recruiters. And of course, how candidates can reach out to us um, as recruiters, of course. Now, when it comes to sourcing, sourcing in itself is an art, right? There is never a one-size-fits-all to it. Now, at Microsoft, we, for very obvious reasons, of course, leverage LinkedIn. LinkedIn currently has over 1 billion users on its platform. And of course, what better, what better platform or what better tool that is, you know, to leverage talent hiring. So firstly, we leverage LinkedIn a lot, very heavily. We also, especially for technical talents, leverage um, platforms like GitHub, Stack Overflow, sometimes lead codes. We also run a lot of Boolean strings um, using search engines. So search engines like Bing, you know, to put our, our strings and then to source for the right candidates. So there are different ways that we source for candidates in a very creative way to get the best talents um, within the market. Now, in terms of how candidates or talents can reach out to us, you can reach out to us through LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great, uh, great platform for you to reach out to us. But let me advise on the best way to do this because I see quite a number of people reach out to me to say, hi, Sophie, um, I'm, I want to, to I want to work at Microsoft. Um, please refer me or something. And then the question I ask you is, have you checked up any of the roles we have? Have you applied to any of the roles that we have? But they don't even know that we have any roles because the candidate themselves have not even gone to do the, their due diligence, which is to firstly check our career site to see what opportunities there are. So I would advise, first things first, if you're interested in a role at Microsoft, go and check our career page. If you then see a role that resonates with you or your career trajectory, apply for that role. Once you apply for the role, you can come to LinkedIn and reach out to any of the recruiters. You know, reach out to any of the recruiters or any of the sources at Microsoft and say, hi, I applied for this role. If you would like to share with me some tips that will set me up for success, or if you just want to familiarize yourself with the recruiter or the sourcer, it's absolutely fine. Add us on LinkedIn, reach out to us. Um, as much as possible, we will try to respond to you um, as quickly and as um, as effectively as, as we can. I'm sure many viewers will love an insight into the interview process at Microsoft. Is this something you can share with my viewers? So, of course I can. So, with the process at Microsoft, it's pretty straightforward. The first things first is you would get an HR screening call or what we call recruiter screening call, right? So that call is usually for 30 minutes. The call is to assess you as a cultural fit for Microsoft. 
it's not a technical interview. We will not be asking you technical questions. We will just be asking, excuse me, asking you about your experience, asking you about your career journey, asking you about the technologies that you code in, if it's a coding, if it's a software engineering role, asking you, you know, just basic questions, soft skills, we want to know how much of a growth mindset you have, your collaboration skills, etc. Cultural fit, nothing technical. You will not be asked technical questions. You will not be asked to code. Once you're able to scale through that first round, you'll go into the second round, which is a technical assessment round. Now, the technical assessment round can take two formats. You're either doing a code test or you are doing a technical interview. Let me explain. There are some teams who are hiring that would prefer that they assess you technically using a code test. While there are some other teams that would prefer that they assess you one-on-one -on -one using a technical interview. Now, if the team that is hiring decides, hey, we want to use a code test to see if you're good with your coding or you're good with your software engineering or development as you say you are, they will send you a code test. The platform we use is Codility. It's usually, you take the, it's, a, it's a link, we send you the link you expect it to submit that within two, three, four days, just depending on what the recruiter sets as a timeline or how quickly they want the hiring to be closed out. If you're successful, um, if you meet up with the cutoff for that code test, and you're, you're of course, you meet up with the cutoff by the, the, the engineering team, you know, running, running through your, your, your code and, of course, assessing to see that you're in good code or clean code. If you meet up with all of those premises, then you'll be moved on to the next round. That's for the code test. Now, if you are not being subjected to a code test, you're being subjected to a technical interview, it's usually one-on-one -on -one and it's virtual. It spans for around 40 to 45 minutes. So it's between you and just one member of the hiring team. So you'd be asked around your knowledge of technical concepts. You would also be asked to pair program on the call. Now, if you are successful with the technical interview bit, you'll move on to what we call the third round, which is typically uh, what we call the hiring events or assessment center. Now, the assessment center is around four interviews in one day. You would have four different interviewers who would be taking their time out to interview you in one day. Each interview would span for 45 minutes. So you would interview with one interviewer, one-on-one -on -one for 45 minutes, you get a 15 minute break. Then the second interviewer will come on board for another 45 minutes, another 15 minutes break, the third and then the final. Of course, each of these four interviewers would interview you on different parameters. Okay. So you would need to properly, properly prepare in order for you to be, to be successful during these interviews. And finally, if you're successful with the assessment center, which is the four interviews in one day, uh, you would literally get your feedback within within a week. If you're successful, they would run our background checks on you and it's welcome to Microsoft. But if you're not successful, we will give you feedback on where you should be successful so that you can try again in six months. Next, I want to ask you about formal education and certification. Is formal education and certification a requirement for securing a job at Microsoft? So at Microsoft, we we like to believe that we are we are quite agnostic with some of our requirements. In terms of education, especially on the engineering side, we like to believe that we prioritize experience over education. Now, if you have the right experience, you have you you're smart, you you write good code, you know what you're doing. You know, your interviews, you're fantastic. You actually show a lot of potential because we actually look out for potential a lot. You have the growth mindset and you are just an all round, you know, star waiting to happen. Then yes, please, we will take you on board. We've had quite a number of people who didn't go through the traditional educational, you know, educational path or do not have some sort of requisite certificate. We've hired such people in the past and we will still keep hiring such people. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't go and get some formal education. No. If you do have a bachelor's degree, you have a PhD, you have a master's, please come in. Because here in Microsoft, we say, come one, come all. Come as you are. 
just come as you are. I don't feel like, oh, I don't have a certain degree, so I will not be taken. No, we do not discriminate here at Microsoft. How about entry-level candidates? I know employers and recruiters like yourself would typically prefer candidates with experience. But where does this leave entry-level candidates? And additionally, what recommendations do you have to boost their chances in the job market? Uh, of course, we, we, we hire entry-level candidates. We hire, so this is how we, we break it down. We say we take an early career, which is entry-level, we take an, and we take an experienced hires. So we would find that there are some teams that would be very specific on getting in early in career candidates. Of course, we hire those. Um, just as much as we hire experience, we get an experience hires, right? But I would say in terms of, for the entry, entry level candidates, just because you are early in career, it's very clear to us that you do not have as, you don't have a lot going for you like the experienced hires. Now, let me give you a quick tip. When you're, when it's time to apply or when you start to interview with Microsoft, it all starts with your resume. Don't joke with how you structure your resume, okay? Reason because you think, oh, I don't, I don't, I have not had any formal work experience, so my resume is, it's okay for it to be scanty. No. Whatever it is you've done, projects in school, if you've done some projects in school, if you've interned anywhere before, if you've been uh, part of an open source project, a hackathon, anything you've done that has to do with building a software solution, please add it to your resume. Please add it to your resume because that's what is going to differentiate differentiate you from you from your differentiate you from person A and person B who are also interviewing for the same role within Microsoft. I've said quite a number of CVs in the past that you know because you're early in career, you just you're fresh out of university or you're just you know fresh out of some certification course, etc. Your CV is just blank. You can't allow it to be blank. What have you done? Don't undermine what you've done. No matter how little it is, even if you, you decided to build, you, you did a, a website, for example, for maybe a church or for maybe a mosque or maybe a friend, don't think, oh, because I wasn't paid for it or because um, uh, it's not, it wasn't a, a full-on job, I can't put it on my resume. The question is, did you build that product? Did you build that solution? Or were you part of the team that brought this hackathon to life? Whatever it is you've done, add it because that's a project and that would really help you to stand out during interviews. You've just mentioned that good resume is key when applying for any role, especially at Microsoft. So building on that, are there resources that you want to share with my viewers for guidance on how to create an effective resume and perhaps what one should look like? Okay, so I mean, this is that's why this is twenty twenty three, and we are now in the age of of um, of AI and technology, right? When it comes to resume building, you can just go online. There are so many AI powered um, AI powered tools that can enable you to build your resumes. There are also some powerful AI building te- powerful AI building templates. Actually, yes, um, on on Google, on Bing, you can just literally just go on. No, go to, to any search engine and type in the AI powered um, resume building tool. You will see quite a number of them. Of course, for obvious reasons, I can't start stating some of these um, some of these tools, right? Because I mean, I'm not supposed to be endorsing any company here. But if you go and check AI powered uh, tools, AI powered resume building tools, you will definitely see quite a few that can help you to either build your CVs from scratch. Or show or scan through your CVs to show you areas that you need to improve on, or literally just show you tips on how to build the right resume for you. You know, many potential candidates often feel discouraged when they come across postings with numerous skills requirements. Uh, for example, when you see a posting about cloud architect, you get to see skills requirements like DevOps skills, developmental skills knowledge of multiple clouds, Kubernetes requirements, and so on. Do applicants really need to possess the exact skills to apply for such positions? So, you know, statistics show that, from a gender perspective now, statistics show that 
a man would see a job description, even if they don't meet up to 60% of that of the requirements. If they meet just 50%, they would apply. The men would apply. However, for the women, if they don't meet at least 95% of the requirements, they will not apply. Now, this is some some stats that I read somewhere in a random article, which to some degree, I kind of want to agree with that. Let me advise, when you read through a job description, please bear in mind that we're not expecting you to have all the requirements 100%. That's the reason why in a job description, every recruiter will tell you that there is a must have and there is a nice to have, right? So the must haves are, these are the skill sets that we are not going to compromise on. These candidates must have the skill sets. The nice to haves are, okay, even if they don't have it, that's okay. That's why you see on some job descriptions, on most job descriptions, you would see, um, um, you'd see required qualifications and you would also see, you see required qualifications, you also see something around additional, additional requirements, something around, so the required qualifications are, you must have these. Then the additionals are, it's okay if you don't have it, but it's just a nice to have. Most job descriptions have those categorically stated, right? So I would say that even if you don't have up to 100% of the skills, it's absolutely okay. Once you can tick the boxes that you have quite a good significant number of the skills, please feel free. Don't shortchange yourself. Apply. From your knowledge as a senior recruiter at Microsoft, are there any particular skills or experiences that are highly valued at Microsoft that can uh, enhance a candidate's chances of being selected for a role? Okay, that's quite an interesting question. So two things I would say. You can never go wrong with authenticity. You can never go wrong. And you can never also go wrong with the right resume. We just talked about that. In fact, no, not two things, two things. Or let me say two things plus a bonus. So now you can never go wrong with the right resume. You can never go wrong with authenticity. And the bonus that I would share with you is you can never go wrong when you display the right growth mindset. Let me explain to you. Your resume or your CV will get you into the door, will get you through the door, right? So it gets you one foot into the process. Your resume is you when you are not around. So the resume is an extension of you when you are not there. Because when somebody is reviewing your resume, you're not there, correct? You're not there. So you cannot say, oh, no, you have to choose me. What I wrote in this resume, this part of it is not correct. You can't say that. So it's you when you're not there. So that means that when decisions are made, when people, are, when hiring managers are, are, want to move candidates to the next round, your resume needs to be very amazing. You need to put in the right information. You need to capture it properly so that you would be able to get your foot through the door. Now, once you've gotten your foot through the door and you are called for an interview, you need to be extremely authentic. Authentic in the sense that you need to be true to who you are. No faking, no lying. Some people lie, yes. No faking, no lying. Come as you are, be bold. If you feel like, oh, during the interview, you're beginning to feel a little nervous, it's okay to say, oh, can I just grab a quick glass of water? I feel like I have some nerves and that would help to calm you down. You can say that to your brightest smile. That's okay. We're humans. At the interviewer, trust me. He's also a human being, okay? And I would also say that it's important that you exhibit the right growth mindset. So for every question that you're asked during the interview, you need to show the team, the hiring team, that, hey, you may know it, but at the same time, you are a lifelong learner. You are very open to always wanting to learn. And if you ask a question that you don't know, it's okay to say, oh, this is quite an interesting question. I think after this session, if you will permit me, I would like to do some research about it, or I would like to, you know, learn some bit, a little more on this, or I would like to also, you know, 
just let them know that you are, you may not know it at this time, but you are going to go, you know, read up on this. And if it's okay, if you can shoot them an email after the interview, once you've done some research and you know you have some bit of an answer, is it okay that you shoot them an email, you know, just to share what you have learned? You are literally telling them that you are such a person who is hungry, passionate, and you literally always want to learn. So never forget, your resume takes you through the door. Being authentic helps you in the interview. Displaying the right growth mindset, you know, is the icing on the cake. It will take you further in into hiring. Let us wrap up with tips now for my viewers. From your experience, what are some of the tips that a candidate can take to differentiate themselves from others and that can help them leave a lasting impression and increase their chances of landing their dream job? All right. That's, that's also another interesting question there. So I would say that the biggest differentiator is your passion. How much do you want this opportunity? Your passion and the work that you put in. There are quite a number of times that, you know, I would send a lot of interview preparation tips. But by the way, if you're interviewing with Microsoft, rest assured, you'll be given an entire elaborate interview preparation document guide, you know, that would, you know, help to set you up for success. It will tell you areas to prepare for the interviews, how to prepare ETC. Now, imagine that I give you that bulky document, that guide, you know, to set you up for success. Some people don't take the time to prepare using it. They probably would just open that document maybe like a night before the interview. What are you trying to do? You're not setting yourself up for success. So it's very important that you are able to properly take time to, to prepare, to study, to code, you know, go on lead code. A lot of people, you know, engineers use lead code a lot to prepare for interviews. I highly recommend it. Go on lead code. It will, here at Microsoft, oftentimes we will send you out for some codility test, like a preparation test. It's not, we're not scoring you. Sometimes we do that. We're not scoring you on that code test. We're just going to send it to you so that you can use it to prepare, familiarize yourself with codility ahead of the interview. So the differentiator is how well you prepare for the for the interview and how passionate you are during the interview. So when you're being asked questions, how are you coming across? Are you just relaxed on the seat and just, you know, you're not showing exuding passion? You're not, you're not, you know, answering the questions with you know, with passion and you know, fire in your voice and in the way that you, in the way that you're coming across. So that's that's a very huge differentiator uh, uh, for you, as little as it may sound, but it really does, it really does differentiate. Because at the end of the day, every employer is looking for people who have passion for what they do, because that's really uh, will take the business from point A. Thank you very much, Sophie, for joining me and sharing your insight onto this topic. Do you have any final words before we conclude? Um, thank you so much. Uh, I had fun answering these questions. Thank you so much. Feel free to follow me up on LinkedIn if you would like. My name is Sophie Okonkwa. Feel free to follow me on LinkedIn. If you have any questions you want to ask me regarding your career journey, I'll be more than happy to help. And I wish you a fantastic professional journey ahead. Bye. All right, so it's a wrap on yet another interesting day in the life episode of the Tech Talk Show with me, Kazim. If you found this episode informative, please consider subscribing, commenting, liking, and sharing with others. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye bye. <laughs>